Hi, so in this video I wanted to talk about installing uh, Firefox and Thunderbird on, uh, on Debian and uh, also um, to other related web browsers, namely Waterfox and Firefox Developer Edition. All of these four apps share the same kind of uh, framework upon which they are built and uh, basically uh, the way they, you, you install them is uh, exactly the same so that's why I'm going to be talking about all of them uh, in this video and um, basically there is already quite a lot of tutorials on YouTube that talk about installing uh, Firefox from uh, your package manager in, on Debian that's apt and uh, the issues that come with that, namely that you get an older version and in order to have a later version, what a lot of people also recommend in a lot of YouTube tutorials is to use Flatpak, um, which, um, which is probably not a bad idea. I have tried it, but uh, I kind of, just like my own personal impression of uh, installing those apps on Flatpak, has been uh, worse than uh, this other method that I'm going to be showing in this video. Um, like, uh, there were like a couple of issues, I'm just gonna mention them really briefly, I'm not going to talk about uh, Flatpak um, in this video very much, but basically what I didn't like is the fact that you can't run uh, the browser, like launch it from the terminal by just typing it in like, uh, say like Waterfox or Firefox and then maybe giving it, giving it some options and then uh, hitting enter and then the browser launches. Uh, um, so you can do that in Flatpak, but you have to use a specific command. It's like Flatpak run and then the name of the, of the app, but using the flat, Flatpak's naming convention. Which is uh, which tends to be tends to look like, for example, for for Waterfox, it's net dot Waterfox dot Waterfox, and like for for Thunderbird, it's org dot Mozilla dot capital Thunderbird with a capital T. So like you have to like remember these things, and that's much more complicated than just typing in like a, a normal name that you are used to, like the way you're used to on with all the other Linux programs. Then, uh, like, Flatpak also uh, ins kind of creates a lot of additional files on your system. And the configuration files and the, the data files, like, the, for example, the profiles folder for each of these browsers and the email client, uh, will go to a different place than you what you would be used to otherwise. Uh, so that makes sense in the in the kind of in the within the framework of Flatpak and how they they work like they each app is a con containerized and like it has its own isolated place where you uh, you get uh, those files and like where they where they go but those locations are different from like kind of usual uh, linux locations and i didn't quite like it so um another little thing was that like i was getting like GTK warnings uh, in the console or like in the terminal when I uh, launched uh, a browser or uh, the email client and uh, with my with the method that I'm going to be showing in this video that those warnings did not pop up there was one warning but there's a way to get rid of it very easily so but like uh, yeah, so like there's a like a, as you can see there's a constellation of factors that kind of uh, just like make it like a worse option at least for from my personal perspective. Um, you know, uh, there's also like a factor that like basically the method that I'm going to be showing in this video is installing those programs from. Uh, from a tar uh, tar.bz2 file, which is uh, what you can download from the official website. If you go onto the website, you can just like download that archive and then un, uh, un, uh, extract it, and uh, you can launch the program right away. But then there's also like a couple of other things that you you want to set up so that it's uh, easy to use and so that it follows Linux uh, 
kind of conventions of how to uh, where to put programs and so on. Um, so uh, the version like about Flatpak, the last thing that I'm going to mention about this and then I'm going to move on to talking about uh, the main thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is like the version so uh, that they have on Flatpak is usually I, I guess it's, it must be quite up to date and they, they must be updating it quite regularly but still like with this method if you just download the, the latest archive um, the app is self-updating so you will always get the latest version automatically so and you don't need to do anything uh, to to just like uh, you don't need to remember to update it or, or anything like that so uh, like for other apps I don't really mind being on an older version that's like a Debian thing and I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with it, with that for for a lot of apps but for these particular ones I would really really prefer to have the latest version because sometimes there's like nice improvements and uh, yeah it's just kind of uh, something that I would like and uh, that's uh, the way that I uh, I prefer it so all right, so let's uh, enough for this introduction. It's probably been quite long, but I just wanted to mention a few of these things about other installation methods so that I don't have to go back to it uh, in the main part of this video. So now with that out of the way, let's uh, switch to this uh, screen capture view. And um, so let's see. Oh, come on, like. So I'm going to revert my VM where I'm testing everything. Um, if you haven't watched other videos in this series, you will have, uh, you, it's probably like, why am I talking about the VM? But in this VM, I'm testing all the different software that I'm going to be installing on my actual laptop after I have figured out uh, everything. Why is this, why does it keep, messing with things i don't know what's going on sorry about that but uh basically i'm going to revert to a previous snapshot before i uh installed all of this stuff like uh, here you can see the description it says that so i'm going to revert to the one before it press restore and uh, i'm ready to go so i'm gonna click start and uh, the vm will launch So, um, all right, here it is, um, up and running. Uh, let me just open up a terminal right away. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Okay, um, so let's now take a look at the websites that we, of the, like, uh, of each of these apps. Uh, that we're going to be installing. So like if you just go to the website, the first one I'm, I'm showing is Waterfox and the reason why is because that's the browser that I use most of the time personally. Uh, it's a, If you haven't heard of this browser before, this is basically a fork of Firefox but it's more privacy oriented and like you can read more about it on this website if, you, if you're interested in learning more but uh, basically it works exactly like firefox all of the add-ons everything works exactly the same there's just like more privacy uh, focused uh, aspects uh, to it so uh, but basically all of these four apps uh, use the same system to like uh, for uh, distributing linux releases and they use a, a tar.bz2 file. So like if I click uh, download Waterfox here, what it's gonna do is, is it's gonna start downloading a tar.bz2 uh, archive. There seems to be already one downloaded in my, um, in my downloads folder. Let me just remove that real quick so that the names of the files aren't, aren't confusing.
Yeah. Okay, I deleted those. So, uh, so if I click here, here's the file that you uh, you will download. Um, and uh, the same goes for basically each one of these of these apps. So like for Firefox, you click here and then you go just download the browser and you uh, get uh, the same thing basically. Here it is downloading. Same for the developer edition. And for um, for Thunderbird as well. Thunderbird has recently updated their interface and uh, that's like a good a good time to have a, like an up-to-date version because then you can like you start using all of the new features right away um, so that's cool um, basically yeah these four archives so you can download them from the website and that's totally fine but what I did for myself is uh, I created this uh, I have this separate file where um, it's basically a checklist of uh, all, all the different uh, things that I'm going to be installing on my system and uh, I just put all of the steps uh, in this uh, in this file so that I have it for future reference and uh, over here basically I already figured out the links to the latest versions and uh, a terminal command to run to download that file right away for each of these apps so that's what I'm gonna be using I just wanted to show you the website so that you know like where where they basically come from and like how to download them uh, from the website if you want to but uh, I'm gonna be using these links in the in the uh, in the process that I'm going to be showing you but uh, I'm gonna come back to those steps so that I, I don't want to like go through these uh, out of order because it's gonna be a mess um, so uh, one of the things that I was I wanted to get right basically when um, when researching how to like what would be the best way to install these uh, these apps uh, on my system is like how can I follow the Linux uh, Linux's um, conventions uh, uh, best and like uh, not deviate from them too much basically um, and. Uh, I just realized that I forgot to pull up one um, one web page that uh, that I need. I think uh, I think it's this one. Yes, it's this one. Okay, so basically, I found this answer on uh, Stack Exchange, uh, which um, basically someone asked, "What is the user equivalent of the global opt directory?" So I guess first of all, like, what is the opt directory? In case you don't know. Uh, this is a directory where you're supposed to install uh, software that comes as a package basically it's already everything's already packaged into it and you just uh, you just put it into the opt folder so that's like a special folder where you can install kind of this special type of software um, you can uh, actually there is a manual page for uh, for the standard uh, of the file system hierarchy if you go to man uh, higher uh, it explains it so if you will look here for opt it says here that this directory should contain add-on packages that contain static files I mean it might sound quite 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 vague but basically if you if you google uh, if you google it you will uh, find more information about uh, what it means like for example VirtualBox guest editions get installed here because that's like that's not something that comes from the package manager nor is it something that you compiled yourself which would go to like user local um, as far as I understand I'm kind of still learning uh, a lot of these things but um, I'm pretty sure that that's correct um, and so like guest editions are like this special kind of package that just kind of comes as a in, the, in bulk and you, it just goes in opt 
and same goes for tuxedo control center which is a which is a basically it's this uh, let me show you what it is uh, it's an app that comes with all the laptops uh, and like computers from tuxedo computers and uh, that's the uh, that's the company I bought my laptop from and it's just like uh, you can uh, configure uh, things here that like uh, uh, um, I don't know how to describe it but basically uh, you can create profiles for uh, different uh, like situations so that like your computer doesn't use too much battery power or uh, and so on like you can read what it says over here so this is what what it is um, and it also shows you information about uh, the current status of the like temperature of the CPU and, uh, and and so on so this is like a manufacturer specific uh, app and uh, I just like uh, just to see what what happens. I also installed it in, in VirtualBox and like it went into opt directory. It, it doesn't really it doesn't work on in VirtualBox like nothing shows up in it, but uh, it still like launches and everything. But yeah, uh, that's just like another example of uh, in, uh, um, a program that goes into the opt directory. But basically, uh, some uh, web pages and even official web pages uh, 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 from uh, Mozilla recommend uh, installing basically these tar.bz files like uh, extracting them and putting the contents into the opt directory um, so like here's a page for on uh, from mozilla.org uh, on like how to install Firefox on Linux and under system Firefox installation for advanced users it explains this uh, thing uh, so and it says like just put it into the uh, the the opt directory here it says like move it to the opt directory and the same uh, goes for Thunderbird pretty much uh, exact same instructions but uh, there is a there is an issue with doing it in that way and um, the, the issue is uh, that basically it won't be able to self-update if you install it in that way um, here's for example a reddit reddit thread thread where uh, people discuss this and they kind of try to figure out what to do in, and what they decide to do is to change permissions on the on the Firefox folder and uh, um, yeah basically to change permissions on the folder so that uh, when an update becomes available uh, it can be installed under like uh, non root privileges basically just like a user a normal user uh, launches the app and like it can self update even though it's an opt but opt is a directory that's supposed to be under root basically you you shouldn't really change permissions on it and um, there's this um, uh, other thread where for example uh, here uh, someone asks how to properly install install waterfox on Linux system wide with automatic update working and um, they say that they tried doing stuff with the op directory and uh, Here's someone who this is actually a maintainer of an of the unofficial Waterfox uh, Debian repo, and uh, he also makes like app images and like all kinds of formats. And I think he has even like repos for other Linux distributions. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Here is this his uh, GitHub. I'll get back to that in, in a second. But basically, what uh, what that person says is. Um, where am I? Yeah, he. Uh, they just say that I wouldn't recommend installing by manual on root directory, and um, this kind of goes to, to show that like it's uh, it's probably not the best idea to change permissions uh, just in a directory where y y it's supposed to have uh, root um, 
like it's the files and, and directories there are supposed to be owned by root and not by uh, by by a user like a normal user uh, so basically i'm not sure why they like recommend it here but the main thing is that like if you if you install it following these instructions uh, I haven't actually done that, like I haven't gone through these tests, but I have tried it before in another VM in the past and I remember that updates did not work. And uh, since there are like a couple of other Reddit threads where people have the same issue, I didn't feel the need to go through that. Because it's pretty obvious that like if the, if, if the folder is owned by root, it's not going to be able to, like the app won't, won't have access to, to it and it won't be able to change uh, the files uh, there. So uh, that's why I um, decided to go for uh, for creating a spe separate opt folder uh, like this answer suggests, but in my home directory, just in my user directory. Um, and um, so I guess like, let me just uh, finish uh, this thing where, where I started talking about this like an unofficial Waterfox repo because this, um, this is just like uh, something that I forgot to mention in the intro, but there is this uh, unofficial repo uh, where, which you can add to your, um, to your, to your sources.list and like everything you can go. For example, it says here, if you're using Debian or Ubuntu with KDE, uh, <laughs> but then it also says like if you're using other environment than KDE or other distro than Debian or Ubuntu. So I am using Debian, uh, but I don't have KDE, but uh, this one is for other distros that not, is not Debian. So I suppose that this one is the one that I should pick. Um, and you can add this. Uh, repo by following these instructions and you can install waterfox on apt and uh, i tried it and it did, did work but uh well uh i didn't uh kind of first of all it's like it's an unofficial repo and like i feel like since there is an official release that can update itself um i did i would just rather use that um so not because this is a bad repo, I think it's a, it should be good because that uh, the uh, its maintainer uh, they contribute to Waterfox regularly, and you can go like there was this other thread somewhere um, where uh, yeah, oh, it's actually it's this thread where someone uh, says that contributions are prolific, and he's talking about. Hawkeye, but like here on Reddit, he has a different uh, uh, username, but uh, Hawkeye's stuff, and he was referring to this uh, user. Uh, uh, and uh, let's see, so contributions are prolific. And so like if we take a look here, it's a link to the Waterfox, Waterfox, uh, Waterfox's uh, GitHub and uh, there's like uh, plenty of contributions from from this user. Uh, it's already filtered by uh, by it. and like there is ten pages of uh, of his contributions. So like I think that uh, it's probably it's probably fine. Like uh, I don't you know. Uh, it's someone who clearly puts a lot of work into into this, um, and uh, yeah, and is n known in the community as well. Um, so it's, it's probably okay, but I still decided against it because like if it, it also would be just like the only program out of these four, uh, which I would install through apt, and like it kind of makes sense to just like use all of them. Uh, kind of uh, handle all of them in, 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 in a uniform way. And so that's why I decided uh, to use this other method. 
So, but I just wanted to mention this. So this exists, and in like, uh, if you're interested in uh, trying this out, uh, yeah, it is available. So, but let's go back to uh, to the thing that I want uh, that I was talking about. So basically, this answer suggests uh, like common locations for um, installing software um, uh, that is uh, like software installed by a non-root user. Uh, that's like uh, again go goes back to the fact that like opt is owned by a root user and like the root user is supposed to like be installing stuff there not uh, just like the normal user and uh, the reason we need the normal user to own the folders for waterfox firefox etc is because it has to be able to self-update otherwise it's just like you'll have to update it manually or something and then that doesn't really make any, any sense um, so what I, the reason I was looking for this uh, answer is because I was just like wondering what would be like the best way to kind of follow Linux's conventions. And uh, what I basically decided upon based on what I read here, um, and also like in, other, in a couple of other places, but that was pretty much like, uh, I guess like one of the main uh, places that uh, gave some good uh, suggestions. Um, so here it says like the first step in my in my checklist says that uh, create uh, uh, opt in the user directory and also opt bin. Uh, I think that answer actually says something about uh, yeah like it also suggests that like you can have bin and lib etc subdirectories and um, basically that's uh, that's what I'm I went for and I'm just gonna go ahead and do it right now I'm gonna go ahead and create um, the opt and the bin directory in my user folder let me before I do that let me just check what I have here I'm going to just delete this stuff because uh, this is an old snapshot and it has a bunch of files that uh, are like left over from previous uh, sessions um, they're not necessary right now so uh, I'll just delete them so we don't we have like an, uh, a clean slate and uh, I'll create uh, this uh, opt and bin uh, these opt and bin directories uh, and if I, I just like uh, can show you what I created uh, by using the tree command so we have the opt directory and within it the bin directory so like the archives that I extract will go into opt and then in the bin directory I will create sim links to binaries in each of those folders so uh, if this doesn't make sense what I'm saying right now just like it will in a second but uh, it might already make sense to you if you have uh, well, you know like if you if you know what I what I mean when I say that um, now uh, you should also at this point add a uh, opt bin to path uh, I actually have it written uh, like this over here but um, basically the way to add it to path is um, probably the best uh, way to go would be to edit your dot profile file you could also edit bash rc but um, in order for for example for like virtual consoles like tty1 tty2 the ones that you switch to by uh, pressing Control alt plus f1 f2 and so on i talked about it in in um, in uh, in video number seven in this series so like you can uh, check that out if you haven't seen that but basically that uh, con the consoles will read dot profile so it will be kind of it would make sense to for it to also be able to reach into this directory as well even though it wouldn't be able to launch a graphical app but I might install something else there uh, later on uh, so um, that's the reason I'm gonna use uh, .profile rather than bashrc. But uh, if you never use consoles, it would also work from bashrc. So like I tried fi to figure out but, like what is the conventional way to do it, but I couldn't really fi find any like definitive answers. Um, it might be a matter of preference or something. Um, so I I'm not like entirely sure, but. 
I'm going to use a dot profile for this right now. So um, uh, I'll just say add dash uh, or um, home opt bin to path um, if it exists. And uh, so I just copied this um, from here. This is actually pretty cool that Debian includes this code for you. So you can just like create, for example, a bin directory right in your user directory. So like I have this opt here, but I could also create a bin directory here. And I can just like throw in all of my scripts in that folder and they will be recognized right away. Uh, well, probably after like a login and log out or after reboot uh, in the case of the consoles, but for the, uh, as far as, uh, yeah, like uh, like these normal sessions uh, wouldn't, would, it would have to reboot like if it's, uh, if it's in dot profile or, or log in and out. But like if you're using Tmux, Tmux uh, runs the same kind of shell that console does. So it would uh, recognize it like it, it reads dot profile uh, as well. Um, but uh, I'm digressing. Let me just close this out. And uh, yeah, but that's just like something that I thought I would mention. It's nice that Debian uh, has this included. And I just copied this and uh, I'm just going to add a opt here so that it does what we want it to do. Uh, here we go. So, um, yeah. All right. So, um, I think since I'm like recording right now, I'm not obviously, I'm not going to like log in and out. Uh, and like do all that that's just uh, in the interest of saving time i'll just copy this uh over here like to my terminal and uh and that's that's just gonna do the trick uh, i can check it with uh echo and uh here it added uh the the directory to the path but like that edit to dot profile that i just did would just like after a restart of the system or after logging in and logging out and then back in um it would still be be added so uh, that's all all good um but this is just like for this session okay so uh i did this first step now um like the second step that I have here is um, is basically my personal preference because I'm using a, a window manager and I don't have a desktop environment installed, which would like desktop environments usually like, uh, maybe I can show you my current, um, Uh, yeah, I can show you that. Like, my current laptop comes with this, and like, you get all these directories like desktop, documents, uh, downloads, music, uh, pictures, public, videos, and templates. Like, all these directories. Uh, they basically, if I don't uh, do this, what. Uh, what it says over here in this step, like these directories will get created by either Waterfox or Firefox or Thunderbird or Firefox Dev Developer Edition, like any of those apps, will just create these directories when um, when they think they need them, basically. <laughs> like unless I configure them to uh, basically to refer to a different directory, and. Uh, this is basically the way to do it. What I did is like I, I created, I wrote this command um, that what it does essentially is it just, it's a for loop that goes through all these values, desktop, download, and so on. And then it runs uh, uh, this xdg user does update 
command and it sets each of these uh, values desktop download etc uh, to home the home directory so that basically whenever a program wants to use one of these directories it always uses my home directory and just like leaves it alone doesn't create any anything any new uh, directories that's my current preference uh, like you can always change that if you want and you you know like it's it's uh, it's it's a personal preference like wh whatever way you want to configure it but that's uh, my preferred way because i i literally never you never use those folders like documents uh, music like i have my own system where uh, of how i organize my files and i only use those and like uh, I, I, like coming from a Mac which just like basically creates those folders and like you, there's no, no way to get rid of them like on Linux there is a way and I want to I want them gone so uh, that's what I'm doing um, uh, just like also to show you that you can uh, read uh, uh, take a look at this manual page for for this command sdg user there's update and it will give you more information about uh like for example i'm i'm using the set option and here it says that name should be one of the following and that's basically the uh, these are the values that i'm using in my command um so so what this command will do is it will create a file in the dot config folder that's uh, of course uh, user uh, users home dot config uh, right now there is isn't that file so like let me run the command and it will get created here it is user ders dot ders uh, so like if I open it here's how it looks and it added all these values um, here you can also create this file manually if you want to, but there is a command to do it, so uh, it's kind of uh, nice to use the command, I guess. Uh, but yeah, this is what it does. It creates this file, basically. So um, that's that. Um, let's see. So uh, I did the, the first step, the second step. Uh, And um, yeah, you can read more about this uh, as well on ArchWiki. Here, it, like talks about all these like user directories, and uh, there was also this uh, this thread uh, on uh, Arch Linux's forums which uh, was helpful in figuring out what to do here so i'm gonna link to that uh, in the description as well like uh, here is one example uh, let me just find it real quick of so, uh, someone else's like uh, configuration and they also like do just like home uh, basically user directory for desktop for templates uh, for public share and like, but for other things, they set up uh, like set other folders, but I just set it all to home basically. Um, so, all right, uh, that's, um, that's that. Um, let's now move on to the third step. So before we start installing the actual programs, I realize it's been like, <laughs> I've already been talking for quite a while, but there's just like a few, quite a few things to figure out. And like, once you understand how this works, it's, it's really very, very simple. Uh, but um, it's just kind of like, there's a lot of factors coming together. So uh, it takes a while to, to explain everything. Um, basically, you also need to install this package because without it, the, the programs, like if you just like, un uh, extract them from the archives that they won't start without this package you'll get an error uh, you need this uh, this dependency uh, so I'll install it here we go um, it's actually listed on um, somewhere in here uh, I think oh 
Oh, that's interesting. I, I didn't notice this. They actually have uh, like instructions for installing in the user's account as well. Uh, but that's good actually uh, that they have it. Uh, but I remember seeing like these dependencies like somewhere in here, but um, Oh, here it is, like required libraries uh, for Thunderbird, for example. Uh, and uh, here, like, they, they list a bunch of them, but I only installed, I think, what was it? libdbus glib12. Must, must be this one. Um, yeah. For Firefox, uh, it must be also like a link somewhere libraries here so yeah they have them listed here I thought I'd just mention maybe like if someone's watching this and they are on a different Linux distro maybe they would they would need some of this stuff as well um, or like maybe even on Debian but maybe slightly different configuration from mine maybe I installed some of these packages uh, um, already and like maybe if you use some different uh, like you install some other stuff then maybe they they won't get installed for you um, so they are there uh, all these links will be in the description uh, so okay we, we've installed the dependency uh, so that's uh, that's good so now the only thing left to do is to install all of the programs so I'll go ahead and copy uh, uh, this link and uh, I'll download the file and um, I guess what I'll do is like uh, I'll go slightly out of order here but like I'll just uh, download them all uh, one after another so that we are done with the, with downloads and then we can do the other stuff All right, so here they are. Uh, we have uh, all of them. Uh, and um, so the next thing is to extract it. I, I, I'm going to do all of them, extract all of them uh, at once uh, again, like I did with the downloads. Basically, the command to extract, extract them is this uh, tar uh, xjf F, and then uh, the name of the file. You can also add a V here for verbose to see what files are being extracted and have a bunch of text roll, roll off your screen like this. And yeah, so um, basically now I need to just extract these, ar these archives. Note that like if you add options here, make sure that the F is the last one because it actually refers to this file. Uh, so it has to like either be like separate like this or the last one in a chain of uh, single letter options. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, actually I just realized um, one thing. So I'm going to do the next step right now as well. And the reason for that is because like when I extract Firefox, the folder will have the same name and it'll create a mess. So I don't want that. So I'll move uh, Waterfox uh, to opt right away uh, where we want it to be. So uh, and we'll, I'll place like Firefox, Firefox Dev Edition and Thunderbird in this folder as well. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, Firefox 116, that's uh, the regular Firefox. Uh, that is to say the like non-developer edition one. Um, so I'll move that to opt as well. And uh, next is uh, the other Firefox, which is developer edition 117, etc. So 
So I mean, you can see that it's also named Firefox, uh, so I can't like I couldn't have extracted all of that at once in the same folder. Uh, so I'll move that to opt, but I'll call it uh, Firefox dash dev edition. Here we go. And uh, finally, Thunderbird. All right, uh, move Thunderbird to opt. Okay, so we have uh, all of these um, um, in the right place and uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete the these .tar.bz2 files because uh, we don't need them anymore. You might want to keep them in case you make a mistake, but uh, you know, uh, I think it's going to be fine. Um, so, okay. Um, and finally, the, uh, the last step in all of these uh, steps for installing each of the, uh, the browsers and the email client uh, is to create a symbolic link in, in the opt bin directory. That's what I was talking about uh, before in, in this video. So, um, I'll change uh, to that directory to opt bin and uh, what I'll do is I'll use the ln command with the s option stands for symlink and I also use v to for verbose to for, so that it shows us what it what it's doing um, and um, I'll create a symlink for waterfox slash waterfox because that's the binary if like I can show you what uh, that folder looks like uh, so, or uh, the folder here it is so like uh, here's like all the files in the waterfox directory and uh, for firefox thunderbird and firefox developer edition it just like looks very very similar uh, and we need uh, this one waterfox uh, that's the main binary so uh, so I can just link it here like this. Here we have the link. You can use ls-l to see what the link refers to. And uh, next is um, the same thing for Firefox. Firefox slash Firefox. I guess let me show you like that directory as well. I don't know why not here's how it looks and we need uh, this Firefox file uh, so another link here we go and uh, next one is um, Firefox uh, dev edition and the binary is also called Firefox so I'll have to rename the link to uh, to Firefox dev edition so that it's different from just Firefox. So uh, we are creating a link to Firefox dev edition, Firefox, but we'll give it a different name, which will be Firefox dash dev edition, like this. And finally, um, Thunderbird, uh, here is our binary called Thunderbird and uh, we can just create a link to, to it like this Thunderbird Thunderbird here we go uh, here's all of them so uh, we're done with uh, with creating sim links and uh, I'll change back to my home directory because we're all done here. And um, let me see. So yeah, done with this checklist. So what I want to show you now is basically how how you can um, use these programs from command line. Uh, there's quite a few like interesting things that you can do. 
um, basically like uh, maybe like to, just to start with um, so auto completion worked that means that like my opt bin directory is on the path and is recognized that's good basically if you if you type any of these uh, can, commands that we or like yeah commands or like links to binaries that we the names of the links to the binaries that we just created waterfox firefox firefox dash dev edition and thunderbird you can use help option on, on all of them and it will give you information uh, on like what options you can use here and like one of the most powerful features of this these apps that i use a lot is profiles so um basically uh what you can do is you create can create multiple profiles that uh, will be completely separate and you can launch them independently as different instances of the same browser or email client and you can have like one profile for like uh, your like you know i don't know like youtube and another profile for your like online uh, shopping etc so like uh, the possibilities are endless basically you can you know like it really helps me personally to organize uh, things so that i don't have just one browser where everything just like is in a huge mess and like a ton of bookmarks i used to do things like that and that just like is a not not a good way to to do it uh, uh, the ex experience has shown that to me so uh, I now create a bunch of profiles for different purposes and uh, that's how I organize it um, basically um, so we haven't launched any of these apps yet uh, once you do they will create some folders in your home folder I have a bunch of uh, files over here that's just kind of how the home folder on Linux looks um, and that's okay uh, but uh, some new ones will appear over here um, which let me see so what should I start with let's let's just launch waterfox oh yeah like one one small thing that I wanted to adjust there so here it is like launched uh, like uh, with its default profile um there's this warning here that only appears for water waterfox out of all of these and there is a way to suppress it and i'm going to show you show it to you in a second but um first let me just uh launch each one of these apps so that uh, the default profile has some content basically um and like the the folders uh in the home directory gets get created so Firefox now Firefox dev edition you also might notice that they are popping up like in full screen right now like maximized in my window manager if you're using awesome window manager you might prefer to for it to appear in a pane like this which is my preference and I'll show you how to do that uh, in this video as well, but uh, a little bit later. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're done with the Firefox Dev Edition. And finally, Thunderbird, the brand new version with its new interface. So, here we go. So like, if we take a look at, uh, at the home folder now, there's a couple of new directories here. Uh, one that's called Mozilla, one that's called Waterfox, and one that's called Thunderbird. So like Waterfox and Thunderbird are obviously for the apps that their uh, name corresponds to. And uh, the .mozilla one, uh, is for both Firefoxes, both the Dev Edition and the 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 regular one. Uh, it's just like .mozilla slash Firefox. It has this content, and then 
dot water fox has this content and uh, dot thunderbird has this so as you can see there they look very similar uh, but like for for the dot mozilla folder it's just like a difference like dot mozilla firefox because like dot mozilla has this like extensions folder which i'm not sure what it's about like what it's for but it's there um so so yeah uh what i also i don't quite know the reason why it cr each one of these apps like if you look at waterfox or actually like let's take a look at thunderbird um it, ha it creates like default release profile then the default profile uh i don't know why i have no clue uh but like the one that they launch is the default release one um and we can check that like uh by just taking a peek inside and seeing that there is some content but in the other one uh there's going to be just times.json file uh, which means that it's just like a new profile that hasn't been uh, launched yet ever uh so same goes for uh for waterfox it has the dot def default release and the uh, 68 edition default uh let me see so that I'm also like in case i'm mixing something up but i'm pretty sure that that's correct that the default release yep yeah, it's the like the the one that got launched and uh, the 68 edition is uh is empty uh now for uh, for firefox i guess only the firefox proper or like the regular firefox created two folders and then the dev edition created only one i think uh so let me check that let me list it out again over here and um so so i think that that default release is the one that with content and that's correct and uh, the dot default one is empty and uh, the dev edition one should have content because we launched the dev edition and that's why we have the folder there so yeah that's the profile like the default profile folders that you get um, now um, you might already have you're like you might be for example like i am i'm uh, moving f all of my stuff from a mac and i already have a folder with my profiles so the only thing I, I need to do is to copy that folder like all these profiles and just like dump them in uh, in these folders and uh, let me just type it again so like ls.waterfox dot uh, mozilla firefox and uh, dot thunderbird and so like what i can do is i can just uh, i can just do, like uh, what i'm gonna do is i'm i'm going to delete basically all of these default when i'm gonna be installing it i mean when I, i'm just gonna delete all the default ones and i'm gonna put the put mine in there and uh, then i'm going to edit these profiles.ini files um, let me uh, open those actually and show you what uh, what they're all about so profiles.ini profiles.ini and profiles.ini let's use vim for that open it all in separate tabs here we go so um, this is the waterfox one so this is an, the empty profile I don't really understand like why it is like this it says like default is set to one but then uh then like uh it says like th that for this install the default like is the other one like i don't uh, know how this works but uh I also know that you can delete this profile and nothing will really happen uh, and you can like always add it back later and in fact you don't even need to edit edit these files necessarily if you don't want to what you can do is you can uh, 
instead, uh, oh, this isn't gonna do what I want. Let me use close this for for a set. Uh, you can actually use an option if I go like Waterfox help, and this works for uh, for all of these uh, apps. Um, you can just like from a terminal from the terminal you can launch any folder as a as a profile you can just use this dash dash profile and then use the path uh to that directory so like it would be uh waterfox dash dash let's just like to demonstrate let's launch that that inactive profile uh just to test things out like and dot, dot waterfox and what's it called like that 68 edition it's an empty the empty one um, so now it should like open as a new profile and uh, now if I close it I, we can check that uh, that list um, this one and uh, the other one so now well, both of them have content which shows that like both profiles have been launched and the second one I just launched from the command line um, but like even if it, it, it is like in this case uh, like still listed in this uh, uh, where is my vim command here it is in the profiles.ini file here it is but um, I know for a fact that you it doesn't have to be in this file uh, because I did it like on on my Mac multiple times that where I just like would have this folder like somewhere else and I can launch it from there and uh, it works just fine so you don't have to um, have it in the profiles.ini file the reason you might want to have it here is because uh, each one of these apps also have a uh, has a profile manager, which you can launch by uh, using this dash p option, and then uh, it will launch. So you can launch profile from here. You can also change the default profile profile from here as well. Uh, you can tick this or untick this. Uh, basically, yeah. So. Uh, this uh, profile manager, this is it's called. It lists uh, the profiles that are 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 in the profiles.ini file. So uh, that's why you might want to have them there. Or also another reason actually is because you can launch a profile by name with the dash p option and then give it a name start with profile it's kind of weird that help doesn't doesn't tell you that like you can actually omit uh the profile name and then with dash p you can just like get the profile manager there is also a separate option for like profile manager uh, i can try that out i'm um, quite sure that it's the same thing yeah it's the same thing but i al always use dash p um, because that's kind of that's shorter and easier to remember probably because like this one also has like this capitalization stuff going on but anyways um, so this is that that's why you might want to have it in um, in your uh, profiles.ini file um, so let's just uh, kind of just to demonstrate that you can uh, launch it with a name and there's like one more thing that I want to show you real quick uh, which, which I, for which I need the browser launched launched and uh, so basically you can uh, type uh, the name of the profile uh, wait uh, 68 edition default pretty sure that's right yeah here we go um so like you can there's also this special about profiles 
page that you can basically can manage profiles from here as well that's just like another way also works for firefox and uh, the firefox dev edition of course not sure about thunderbird if it has it but uh it, it still has like all the same command line functionality uh, for sure. So just wanted to show this uh, briefly. Okay. So let me see, where are we? Um, right, so I showed you the profiles folder. So like if you want to transfer things, uh, you might just want to um, to copy your prof or profiles into into these folders and then edit the profiles.ini file files or or file if you're only using one of these apps uh, and basically you can edit it by hand um, I guess like the only way like if you're transferring it you can also transfer the profiles.ini file from your, from your other machine if you have it like I mean uh, that would make sense as well um, yeah but like uh, the 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 reason I didn't kind of men start with, with that is because uh, I actually don't have it I just I just have like a separate command set up on my Mac where like none of the profiles is actually are actually in the profiles that I and I file I just launched them by path basically like I said like in, from the command line that was like the easiest way for me to set it up uh, but um, you might have this file so if you if you have it you can just copy it here and it should work just fine um, maybe create a backup copy of the default one just to make sure that uh, you have this information like I'm not sure what's gonna happen with this like install number maybe you'll have to you know replace uh, this line uh, so unfortunately I don't have any you know any way to test it right now but uh, you should be fine like it's not it's not too complicated uh, to edit this uh, you know it's uh, it's pretty clear and quite self-explanatory what all these things mean um, you can also just like to to kind of see how things work you can edit or like you can create a new profile for example let's just create a new one from here call it like test and finish and here we have a, a new profile and so now if i open open it here like profile 2 and uh, uh, we have uh, this new information here so it added the path to it uh, and uh, and uh, yeah here we go so one other thing that i wanted to mention about uh, these this profile stuff is a, a way that like i have quite a few of these profiles and i also use a lot of browser extensions like if i were to anytime i install a new extension if, and if i have like a number of different profiles and i want to use that extension in in a lot of those or like in, in a significant number of those profiles at least it would be a real pain to install that extension in every single profile so there is a way to uh, to basically have a common extensions folder for all of them and you you can use this you can create a symlink uh, for for that so I'm gonna show you how to do this now basically so that we have something to work with I'm gonna launch waterfox with this uh, current default profile and uh, I'm going to install an extension uh, addons.mozilla.org and let's install like dark reader add it add allow in private windows that I always allow extensions to run in private windows never really uh, uh, had the situation where I opted against this but yeah uh, so okay now we have the, an extension here in this uh, in this profile so let's take a look at what happened with the files uh, that 
must be in the default release and yet there we go now we have this folder extensions here it wasn't there before uh, but now it got created and in that folder we have the the extension that just got installed so um, it's quite easy actually to to just like uh, to know what to do in this situation like if you if you have, want to have another profile with the with a with the same set of extensions like you don't have to enable all of them in all profiles it, they can just be there and you can enable them or or leave them uh, turned off uh, as you wish but they'll just all be available in all the profiles that you will kind of link to this common extensions folder that I'm about to create so let's go ahead and see how that works uh, so I'll change directory to waterfox so now we're, we're in this directory and uh, what I'm going to do like the way I, I I've been setting this up so far is I, I was creating a uh, a folder over here in this uh, in this directory I'll, I called it dot shared uh, and uh, in that folder I would also create uh, subfolders for like in case I wanted to have like multiple subsets of extensions for different uh, kinds of profiles I actually never had that situation where I had to do that but I prefer to kind of think in advance for these things because then like if I ever need that then I'd have to like reorganize things and like re like relink everything. That's uh, complicated. So, uh, but let me just first create this dot shared folder. Uh, here we have it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this extensions folder from uh, from the profile uh, where it got created, so that we have it in in a different location but we're going to create a sim link in the same place and we're going to call it extensions as well so that the program sees it uh, and uh, is able to uh, load extensions from there uh, so that's what we're going to do so I'm going to go ahead and move uh, the extensions folder from this profile here it is and um, to dot shared folder and I just like I called the default set of extensions zero so that's what I'm going to rename that that folder to so it's gonna go from from this to dot shared uh, zero run the command and uh, I'll just use the tree command to show you what it did and this is what it did um, so So we we're done with this step now. Now I need to create the sim link that I was talking about. So uh, let's uh, change directories to, uh, directory to the profile directory and uh, go ln s s v and I'm gonna link it to one directory down then dot shared uh, zero. That's the folder that we want to link to and we want to name the link extensions extensions just like use this exact same name so that to waterfox this folder looks exactly the same here we go so um just to prove that it works with another profile i just created the test profile and it's still empty so I'm going to use that to for for this demonstration. So I'm going to change directories to that test profile. It doesn't have anything inside, but I can still create that sim link so that when I do launch it, it's it's going it's going to go. Huh? There is an extension already there, uh, and uh, you'll see how that works in a second. So uh, I'll just use the same command because it's uh, the relationship like to that directory is the same. It's a one directory down dot shared uh, zero, and we need to call the link extensions. So here we have it. Okay, so now let's first uh, launch 
the the this pr profile, the first one that we already that we just opened to install the extension, uh, the default release one. So um, I'll just open it just to show that it still works. Here it is, the extension is still there. And uh, like if I go to like waterfox.net, you can see that it's in dark theme. If I disable it, the site looks uh, all white and now it's all dark. So the extension is working. Waterfox didn't even realize that we changed anything. So, um, and this technique obviously works for Firefox and the dev edition and uh, for Thunderbird as well. So like this is great because like all these apps uh, have the same functionality. Um, all right, so we saw that the extension still works. Now we, we created a symlink in a different profile that actually never was launched before. But uh, we, we are going to launch it now and see what happens. And what happens is uh, it looks pretty much like any profile that you uh, would look if you launched for the first time. But we also have this warning here in the menu. And if we open it, it says Dark Reader added to Waterfox. If we click it, it says Dark Reader added. Another program on your computer installed an add-on that may affect your browser. Please review this add-on. Permission add-ons permissions permissions requests and choose to enable or cancel to leave it disabled and uh, yeah so basically we know what happened because we just did it so like this is okay uh, and we can enable it and we can also allow it to run private windows if you press cancel it will just stay disabled so like if you installed an add-on in some profile uh, and then you open another profile and you realize oh like i don't actually need this add-on here you can just leave it disabled and it won't like eat up any resources but it will be just like there available like this in a, in a turned off state um so that's that's like perfect uh, it saves up a lot of work of like managing this extent these extensions like installing them like separately in different profiles and also um, it saves up like uh, a bit of space on your disk uh, so that uh, a bit of storage space so that you don't have to like you know have these copies of files unnecessarily so this is a great uh, technique and uh, uh, I'm using it all the time um, this is basically how I have my uh, my uh, folders for these apps uh, set up for uh, each one of them um, so this is really useful um, so let's see um, so I think we pretty much covered um, almost everything there's uh, only a couple more things that I wanted to to touch on uh, that are left uh, I'm just gonna check like if I'm um, if I haven't mentioned anything that I wanted to mention, uh, I believe I mentioned um, pretty much anything uh, or everything that I wanted to at this point. So, like, right now I'm going to shut down this VM and I'm going to change uh, uh, to another snapshot where I already have all these apps installed and I'm going to demonstrate the, that the updates uh, are working. Um, and um, yeah, I thought I wanted to show you something else, but I think I think I already covered it here. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, well, if I forget, then uh, I guess no big deal. I might make another video or something. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut it, shut down this VM. And. Um, I'll save the snapshot just in case. I'll call it like testing um, Waterfox Firefox Firefox, etc. Take man, like virtual box always collapses this tree and like it's just like so hard to find anything here uh, what's going on uh, 
right so yeah that's the last one that I have that's what I want to change to and uh, restore that and uh, let's go ahead and launch that I know that uh, a new release of Waterfox just got uh, just uh, like a new version of Waterfox just was re was just released, and uh, I can just like take this opportunity to show that the updates are working. So um, let's do that. Uh, let's launch Waterfox. Oh, like yeah. By the way, it's very nice to just like also launch these commands. You don't have to do this always from the like I, I always like I did you can actually create like oh yeah like maybe this is worth like mentioning uh, as well um, you can also create desktop um, or like like menu shortcuts uh, basically for for these apps uh, and uh, the way to do it is described in these instructions as well um, here it says like download a copy of the desktop file and it gives you some instruction. I haven't done that myself yet, so I'm not gonna say about uh, much more than this about that. But uh, these are available for for Thunderbird and Water or and Firefox. Uh, but they are basically identical instructions for each one of these apps. I'm pretty sure that you can find uh, like. Uh, like basically uh, um, adjust this desktop file because this is like a pretty clear uh, like it's not too complicated a file to edit basically you can like just like you'll just have to change like an icon and uh, and uh, like the name of the program maybe the description and stuff like that so um, so that you can create this file appropriately for each one of these uh, these apps so that's possible to do as well so you can have it like in your menu here somewhere and uh, I haven't set it up yet I, I just usually use uh, uh, awesome window managers uh, run uh, prompt uh, which you can uh, launch by pressing super key plus r and uh, yeah i just launch it from here so let's uh, let's uh, check out the uh, self updating of uh, of waterfox so let's launch it here it goes and uh, it should already be uh, checking for the new version but I think I'm just gonna go to this about Waterfox. Oh yeah, I remembered what I, what else I wanted to to show you. But uh, let's uh, let's deal with this first. So um, so right now is the it's version five point one point zero or G five four point one point zero, and there is an update available to five point one point eleven. So let's let's do that. Uh, now it's downloading the update and it's gonna go just fine uh, it will update to the to the new version by itself um, you don't have to do anything like each time the new update gets released you you'll also get a notification uh, telling you that hey like a new update is available i just kind of rush it right now uh, and open this window uh, to to kind of uh, get a head start on this but um now it says the restart to update Waterfox. Let's do that. And here we go. Now we're at version 5.1.11. So the updates are working. So like one thing that I wanted to mention is uh, like this is, is going to be only relevant to using Awesome Window Manager. But basically, uh, if you leave the configuration uh, untouched uh, 
the, and I'm talking here about the configuration of Awesome Window Manager, uh, then like, for example, this about window will open up like in a pane uh, instead of a floating window. So like, it would be like this. And that's probably not what you want. Uh, so, uh, in, so how, you, how can you change it? Uh, here is how. Let me close this. Um, right, so you need to edit a file uh, in home.config uh, awesome rc.lua, that's the Lua's config, main config file. Um, and uh, basically, let me just like search real quick for like about so I can just like jump to that part. Here we go. Um, so, yeah, uh, I hope I can remember which one of these rules were already here and which ones I added. Um, but basically, let me see. So, I believe uh, this rule for, uh, so let me see, like, if I go to the matching bracket of this, like, this is the end of it, and this rule is for the floating uh, windows, basically. You can add these names over here. Uh, I'm pretty sure this code existed. Yeah, like, this was here before I uh, changed anything, so... Um, I just added these lines here about Waterfox, about Mozilla Firefox, about Firefox Developer Edition, and about Mozilla Thunderbird. And that's just the name of the window. So like if you, uh, let me just open it up again to show you. So like this is the window name that appears like here at the top, like Waterfox. And uh, if we could go to the about window, it says about Waterfox. So you just like note this down and then you type it in here um, like this. There's also like other ways to identify windows, like there's classes, there's like instances, but in this case I kind of, maybe there's like some more general way to like identify that window, but this this works just fine. So uh, you can just like use the window name for this. And uh, it says that like properties floating equals true, so these win windows will always be floating. Uh, so that's that. And also, so that the browser, by default, when you open it, always opens in a separate uh, tile like this and, and not maximized like, like this, which is what it does by default. You can also create this rule. Um, uh, just basically type in this stuff. And... Uh, and it'll work. So you, you assign this property that like maximized equals false. So therefore it appears as a tile. And uh, that solves that issue. So let me see. Yeah, I think we talked about everything. It's, uh, yeah, I've been recording for an hour and a half and I feel like there's not a lot to edit out. So this might be a long video. But I hope uh, uh, what I shared here uh, is going to be useful uh, to you in uh, configuring your system and uh, installing uh, one or several of these apps that I mentioned uh, in this video and uh, like just uh, kind of uh, give you some insight into like what the advantages are in, like, in, of this uh, installation methods uh, method are and like in contrast with the ones that are usually mentioned or at least I don't know like maybe there are tutorials that describe uh, this method as well but I haven't come across them personally um, so I hope this uh, video has been useful to you and that you have found this valuable and uh, yeah thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one